Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's take a look at our keyboard today. Dude, there's a lot in this case, by the way. What's the, okay, here's a question for you guys. Because I was talking about this too. What's the least helpful thing in keyboards right now? And the most helpful. Like, what would you guys say, like, the absolutely best thing in keyboards, like, helpful-wise is, and then the most shitty thing in keyboards at the moment? It's a good question. Most helpful is Alex. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, bro. All right. Look at this. So this is the Y8, by the way. Okay, before we get too into this keyboard, I'm not gonna lie. I think this keyboard is probably gonna be pretty basic when it comes to everything about it interior, like on the inside from what I've quickly glanced at the uh, IC. But I will say like the thing that really caught my attention for this is just the, I guess, really cool design of this. And the price is around 350 to 400 too, so it's not too bad. Um, but it is just a, I think it's what, a leaf spring design on the inside? I have to double check. Um, the, and then the only thing that I'm concerned about possibly is the PCB is apparently one millimeter. We'll see. I, I don't know how this is gonna sound, but we can find out. But otherwise, decent front height, decent price, really cool the way it looks. Oh goodness. It's one, yeah, not even 1.2. But this is one of the weights. This is the heat treated stuff that they've been, um, they're including in this, or you can buy. This is the blue one. Ooh, the array. Dude, the array is sick. The array is sweet. Here's the accent piece. And so they say this makes a difference, by the way. I don't know. I know weights in the, the structure of how you build things does make a difference, but this is their waffled, heat treated interior weight, which again, looks sweet. Like I think this looks like, it does look like dried up watermarks for sure. But I actually think this is really cool. Again, I don't know how this will, if this will do anything. And I'm curious to see how this board will sound. Like I think this is definitely a very curious board. Very pretty though, I have to admit. Very, very, very pretty. Let's actually move some stuff out of the way. I'm also concerned how the stabilizers will fit on a one, one millimeter PCB, so we'll see. Here is the mid-weight, so there's like an in-between as well. Uh, like if you need shims, I know, I'm curious to see how the shims will work too, like a little concerning, but I guess we'll see. We'll take a look at the board, then I'll open up all the accessories and all that stuff too. So here is it with just the regular brass weight, which also I think looks pretty sharp. I have to admit, man, this keyboard does look really nice. Like that looks pretty cool. And then we're gonna swap it out for the heat treated stuff just cause I like the way it looks more. But like, it is pretty cool though. So from a visual standpoint, I think this is pretty nice. We'll take a look from the top again. Yeah, again, nothing too crazy about the internal structure when it comes to like mounting this keyboard, at least at first glance. Side profile, pretty nice, like got a seam there. If you don't like seams, you might not love this keyboard, but it does have the weight peeking through and then a very, very angular kind of box on wedge design. Uh, and then the bottom actually looks really nice too. Again, we'll have to put the other weight at the bottom here as well. But what I like, even though it's kind of not needed here, is it seems to use feet that pressure fit in, which is really nice too. I much prefer that. Uh, again, adhesive probably would have been fine here, but this is always a welcome thing to see. And then we have a recessed USB port, which is awesome. Uh, and then we have some, the Kino, the people who designed this, the designers on the back, which I don't mind there. But other than that, like it's a pretty sharp looking keyboard, I have to admit. This does come in raw, raw alu as well, which I also think really looks nice. And I was kind of hoping they did a combination of raw alu plus the heat treated, but that didn't, they didn't offer that combination, which is a little disappointing, but I mean, it is what it is. We'll put this here for the time being while we open everything else up. All right, there's a lot of stuff in here to unpack. So we'll go through it all quickly. We have some different plates. 
half plate, FR4, full plate FR4, bunch of different foams, uh, what looks like a PC plate and an aluminum plate. And then we have a hot swap PCB today. Kind of hoping there was a solderable, solderable PCB with the one mil. We'll see though. We have a standard daughter board. Oh, that's interesting. It's like a tape for the, um, the wire for the JST connector. Pretty cool. And then we have feet. We have gaskets. So these are, dude, you know what? There's no adhesives in this build. Like that already. Uh, so if you guys don't know already, we're gonna make, dude, let's make today a little bit of an informative opinionated stream, I guess. It's an, it's an opinion though. This is an opinion, mind you. I actually much prefer no adhesives in a keyboard. Don't get me wrong, adhesives are fine, like when you're adhering things that are meant there to stay forever or whatever. But from a building standpoint, everything just feels more fluid when you have things that just kind of like assemble together when you don't need to adhere things or tape things down or any of this. Like, I just feel like it's a better user experience, especially when you're looking at newer people who are doing builds for the first time. But I mean, we'll see. Damn, this PCB is freaking thin. I don't want to swear this morning. Baby shims, I wonder if they're made for standard 1.6. I don't know. This PCB is really thin though, man. Oh my God. Okay, I don't even know if this is easy to tell on stream. Does, that tra does this even translate well? This is so thin. Have I ever done a one millimeter PCB before? Almost feels delicate. Ooh. This is really thin. Interesting. Have I done one? I don't think I have, right? Not a lot of options on the hot swap version. I think there is a solderable version, which again, I would have loved for this, but it's okay. We need to deal with this. I don't know what plate we'll use yet. I am using JWIC switches with a spring weight that I'm very surprised I purchased, but I just wanted to use. Dude, my ass bought, I don't know why I did this. I bought 72 gram slow springs at one point, like a whole batch of them, like two and a half years ago, thinking like, yo, I'm gonna get so into heavier springs. Then I came to realize my fingers are fucking weak. So I rarely use them, but we'll see them today. They kind of sound nice in this. All right, let's do some stabilizers. I actually still don't understand how I'm supposed to do this. Am I supposed to use 1.2 millimeter stabs and then use the shims? I don't know what to do here, guys. Let me assemble a stab and see if it works. This is a 1.6 millimeter stab. Flex test with all the kale sockets. Yeah. The shims are uh, 0.6. I remember them saying that too. I do remember a conversation I had with them, but it's been a little while. Oh God, why isn't this box open? Yeah, I think, I think we'll be okay with these. That's why I think they sent me three of these, but Come on, bro, why isn't this box opening up? Bro, I suck at opening boxes. Do we use alu? There is some weird flex cuts on the alu, which I don't really care for, but where do we use PC? You know, I'm kind of down to do FR4 today. You guys down for FR4? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Pancake. I, I have a feeling it, has, it will have some of that plasticky sound. Oh, this has the flex cuts too, I just didn't see. It might have some of that plasticky sound that I'm kind of looking for. All right. Let's do this. Let's take this sh apart. There's a screw missing here. Mm, I'll check in the case afterwards. I don't know where the screw went exactly. Uh, we have one little screw missing, unfortunately. All right, let's do this. Let's take this all apart. We're gonna swap it all out for that blue stuff. Personally, I think the keyboard, yeah, probably NK67. I think that keyboard there really pushed the envelope and really showed people that like, you can have something that's affordable, that's super custom on mass. And then I think the next keyboard that really started to push, you know, what you can do is the Icky 68. I think that was another really like milestone keyboard that really showed people that like, yo, you can have some pretty fire things. Nope. 
I'm assuming the thicker part of the socks here go on the bottom, so we'll make that assumption. We shall make that assumption today. Cool. Base, really basic, kind of like we've seen on some, uh, actually a few boards now with these socks that get put on. I, lo I love this style of gasketing, love it. All right, now this just gets put into this, from what I understand. We're gonna grab the blue one, which is really cool. I actually really like this a lot. Oh wait, no, 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 pause, 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 pause. We're gonna unscrew this. So I'm also gonna put the blue accent badge. Does this go in the inside? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, it looks like it does go in the inside. It kind of looks like it just wasn't. Dude, let me show you guys, watch. This is the best way to show you guys. It, the bend doesn't even make sense on it. Because this isn't long enough. It just wasn't properly made. As you guys can see, it's not. That's actually really, because like, look, it doesn't even slot in. It's not the proper length. To be fair, this was shipped outside of the, the packaging, but that obviously needs to be addressed on this. That needs to be addressed though. There needs to be a better way to ship this. Maybe there needs to be better QC on this, but that's bad, bro. I thought I was just going crazy there for a second. This one here is straight, but this was shipped inside the keyboard. All right, this is good. We've assembled this. Unfortunately, not with the cool internal or I guess internal weight there, but let's put this to the side. Let's also put this piece on. So we gotta unscrew this guy. God, there's a lot of altering to this keyboard. Change out the weights. Now this guy, I hope is not bent in any funny or f***ed up way. All right. All right, let's apply this little, this is the only adhesive in the entire build here, guys. Much better. Looks. Dust and hair everywhere. Come on, Alex. All right, that's a good way to install this here. All right, as a note, uh, this is one of the few screwless, hidden screw designs that I actually really like, because you don't need to install the switches post top plate here. Also, they mentioned that the screws shouldn't get lost inside the PCB when you go to try to screw them in. I can see why they've made pretty decent, uh, I guess, fixtures for these. That's pretty hot looking. Interesting weight for sure. Any recommendations for switches? Dude, you know what? I would build everything. If you look at my Alien uh, TKL build, I like I loved that build. And there's that accent piece up here as well, which is a little bit more subtle, but I kind of like it. It's not. It's it's a little different. It's really really pretty. Like, I think personally, again, I would pick this up in a raw like a raw finish, just because I think the raw finish looks really sweet on this. And if they sell these weights extra extra, I would buy the weights. I would care more about the top accent piece. Yeah, I mean, this looks really cute on this too. It's a little dark because it's like a, a blue, but on a black PCB, but very, 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 very pretty. All right, keycap time, which I'm still very undecided on. Let's do fundamentals. Greg is simple, I am sure. I am very sure. Let's do fundamentals. It's a pretty nice looking keyboard. What do you guys think? Some stuff I think that ha is going for this is I like the options for having different weights and it seems to have a pretty intricate and fun weight system. So you can buy a few, I guess. You can have some different options there. 
Um, I like the press in feet, fantastic, love that. Overall design is actually pretty nice too. It's nothing like mind blowing, but it is very clean. The seam is not too distracting. I was worried that it would be super, super distracting, but it kind of leads into this mid plate thing over here, which this mid accent piece, which I kind of like. Side profiles, still quite nice. Decent front height of about 18 millimeters, pretty okay. I like the front as well. It has the accent piece over here. It's a little hard to see, a little tough to, to notice, but it is there. And I kind of don't mind that little lip underneath the nav cluster. I think that's actually pretty cool. Weight wise, I think I'm gonna guess about 3.2 inch, 3.3, kind of feels about that. We're using no foam. This does have gasket socks, which I really like as well. There is a little bit of flex happening with this. So I'm kind of curious how this is gonna sound. And we are using an FR4 full plate and it's, this is a hot swap unit. Uh, but let, let's see what this sounds like. Cause I'm genuinely curious. It's actually got a desk pad. I feel like it's only fair to use one. So again, we're using JWIC uh, black switches with this. Uh, they have been spring swapped to Sprit 72 grams slow. Ooh, sorry, my voice just cracked. They've been spring swapped to 72 gram uh, slow springs. And then I am using an FR4 plate, no foam at all. And this is uh, the Y8. So let's see what this sounds like. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. Plug some stuff in, it's actually quite nice. Typing feels actually really, really comfortable. Might even be due to that 1.0 millimeter PCB, but. Okay, you know what I'm, I'm actually picking up from this more? The FR4 is definitely helping. It's 1.0, yeah. So there's definitely a lot of like, it's pretty soft. I would say this is a, a very, very soft typing experience. Not super bouncy and flexy like we've sometimes seen that. I don't love the arrow keys, not gonna lie. These do sound a little bit metallic-y. But the alphas themselves, they do present a little bit more of a uh, louder sound, which I kind of like. You know what? I actually like the typing feel of this. Sound is subjective, obviously. Uh, plus there's so many variables that we could do to this. Like we could put foam in this, we could put nothing like blah, blah, blah. I do think this is actually quite nice, typing feel wise. I don't think this needs foam at all. If you did want foam, it's only because you want maybe a more overall like deeper or foamy sound signature. All right, take care guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Um, that was the Y8, which I thought was pretty cool looking board. Very, very unique choice of uh, weight styling. But uh, enjoy guys, enjoy the rest of your days.